are continuing our series, a chapter reading of Alfred Goldberg's book, Pentagon 9-11, the most comprehensive, uh, one of the most comprehensive 9-11 books out there. This is chapter 15, Logistics. A number of agencies of which the Arlington Emergency Operations Center, the EOC, was chief, provided crucial communications and logistics support to the firefighting. Activated only in times of disaster, the EOC was staffed by county officials and workers who supported all emergency field operations. Around the clock for 14 days, the EOC oversaw the good effect the flow of replacement personnel, equipment, shelter, food, and water to the Pentagon. Yet the center was not without deficiencies in performing these difficult tasks, especially in the early days. Within 15 minutes of the crash, the EOC was in full operation at municipal headquarters two miles north of the Pentagon. Captain Mark Penn, on only his second day as Deputy Coordinator of Emergency Services, assumed management of staff operations with the assistance of Battalion Chief Ray Blankenship. Both were from the Arlington Fire Department. The county manager led the decision-making, and senior county officials, including the fire chief, served as policy advisors. Penn ran the center for some 20 hours straight. First few hours at EOC were chaotic. Fire and police officers at the Pentagon could not be reached, forcing the center to rely on media reports until direct communication with the command post was finally established. Department of Defense officials communicated directly with the incident commander rather than coordinating through the EOC, the incident commander being James Schwartz, also Fire Chief, Assistant Fire Chief at the Arlington County Fire Department. Expecting large numbers of casualties, Penn immediately secured additional EMS assistance. With the help of the Virginia Department of Emergency Management, Penn arranged for ambulances and medical units to come as far away as Fredericksburg and the Shenandoah Valley, 50 to 100 miles to the south and west. Around 11.30 a.m., Arlington County Manager Ron Carlin declared a local state of disaster after consulting with James Schwartz, working with the Virginia state government, Carly cut through the cumbersome process for obtaining state and federal assistance and facilitating rapid deployment of FEMA's urban search and rescue teams that Schwartz urgently needed. And why they needed them urgently was because what many didn't realize was that there was no um, survivors after those because everyone was evacuated and everyone that was left behind were, were dead but they didn't know who was trapped under the rubble and whatnot there were survivors that's why they needed the urban search and rescue teams from counties like Fairfax and um, Montgomery County so but there, there were no uh, the only people that were in the Pentagon at that time were those who were dead from start to finish, the EOC had the primary responsibility for ensuring that the emergency workers received whatever they needed, even as requirements changed. By early afternoon, Schwartz had assigned Chief White to set up a logistics section at the site to coordinate equipment requests and pass them to the EOC. Working with White and commanders to succeed in him, EOC requisitioned materials and specialized equipment, supplied with catalogs, computers and telephones and giving carte blanche, purchasing agents called from county offices, secured a wide range of supplies, fencing, boots, bottles, bosses, air packs, cranes, gloves, thermal images, fuel, dump trucks, uh, school buses, and um, public works vehicles. Logistics also involved providing for daily needs, clothing, shelter, health, food, and sanitation a gargantuan task. Given that crews numbering many hundreds work 24 hours a day, on scene, White found the EOC staff indispensable, especially when portable toilets became an urgent necessity the first afternoon. For the first several days, EOC coordinated the supply of food and beverages. Penn relied on the food services coordinator, a contractor, for the Arlington County Jail to feed emergency workers before the Red Cross, Salvation Army, Volunteer agencies and restaurant chains set up a variety of food services at an area des designated Camp Unity on the Pentagon ground. What's interesting and what's vastly understated is that you had a number of companies and corporations that were involved with the assistance to the search and rescue and 
EMS and fire department and police departments and FBI officials. Now imagine you're three weeks in, four weeks in, and you have like 3,000 people on site. Well, I mean, it's not like they can go inside the Pentagon and use the bathrooms, right? The building is, is closed off. So where do they go? Well, they go to the porta potties and to those who set up shop for massages and and um, health needs, ambulance set up uh, tents, food trays from food company. And it, nobody ever really talks about that. And the only reports that I've seen were from Alpha Goldberg's book here and from Patrick Creed's book, Firefight, which is the best book on 9-11, Pentagon at 9-11. This is probably the, this is the second best. But I think Pentagon 9-11 by Alpha Goldberg is more like a, a report than a book. I mean, it is very detailed. Help came from other quarters also on the first day when fire suppression was still crucial. Private companies donated truckloads of bottled water, flashlights, batteries, and other critical equipment. On September 12th, a Wisconsin factory delivered specialty boots that workers desperately needed to replace their rubble-damaged ones. Early on, after Plower made a chance remark that the site would become a quagmire if it rained, the Army Corp of Engineers rapidly built an all-weather road that became the primary access route to the site for all vehicles. The engineers also installed telephone and electric cables. Penren, too, supplied equipment supplementing the EOC system. On the first day, it procured backhoes, dump trucks, dumpsters, cranes, generators, and light towers all indispensable for the heavy work underway. At White's request, the Fairfax County Fire Department sent an experienced logistics team to assist. In Schwartz's opinion, logistical needs were met handsomely, but from time to time, they were anxious moments. The EOC also helped coordinate activities of the many supporting organizations, including the Department of Health and Human Services, Environmental Protection Agency, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, U.S. Forest Service, Red Cross, and Salvation Army. You name it. Everybody that we could possibly need was brought to bear on the problem, Penn later observed. A spirit of generosity and fellowship pervaded those support efforts. From the Arlington County Sheriff who brought 40, pieces to, 40 pizzas to the workers in the middle of the night to the local businessmen who provided a warehouse. And I think it can't be understated at how important those little uh, businesses were to this very big and egregious project that demanded every second of the day's attention. All right, that's the end of this chapter. We'll see you soon in the next chapter. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.